and welcome back yes it's been a while but i'm back and i'm going to talk to you amongst other things about the new arduino pro ide even though they seem to have dropped the uh, the pro moniker on that uh, screenshot you see there um, but they have now got it to beta stage which means it's pretty much usable maybe not for system critical um, code but then again us hobbyists don't really have system critical stuff do we so i would say we need to explore this now i know i've looked at it in the past a little bit and it was a little bit flaky but it was it, it promised good things and it's built of course on eclipse Thea, which is a, a well-known platform to build these sort of ides on so yeah we'll have a look at that we'll also talk about um no no we're not talking about my workshop i'll do a separate video about that altogether we will talk about um, my ESP32 web radio because the BBC, in their infinite wisdom, decided that on March the 21st they would stop transmitting on all the known URLs that people have been using for donkey's years and uh, have totally destroyed people's listening pleasure, especially those from abroad. But uh, I think we might have cracked it between us. And uh, yeah, well, put it this way, I've got Radio 2 and Radio 4 on my ESP32 web radio now, and that works absolutely fine. No chirps, burbles or anything. And yes, they do send out metadata as well. So that's at least two things, and I'm, I'm sure there's going to be lots of other things that occur to me as we go forward. Now, you might hear a little bit of noise out there. For example, there's a plane going overhead at this very second because I've got my door open, the windows open, because I've been painting this morning. Yeah, I've painted the gates, two gates, I've got out there, I've painted my window frames, so I can't shut those because, yeah, things are still in a state of flux, let's say, but it's becoming more stable. So, without further ado, let's look at this Arduino IDE 2.0.0 Beta 5 and uh, see what it can do. Now, it says here Beta 5, then in brackets, um, a little bit further down, it says four weeks ago. Well, I downloaded this, I don't know, three or four days ago. So I'm guessing there isn't one there now, but who knows? By the time you see this video, there could be a slightly improved version. And if there is, for goodness sake, take it, because after all, this is beta software. OK, let's um, let's flash an LED or something, shall we? Now, a quick shout out to my sponsor, JLC PCB. Now, as from tomorrow, so that by the time you see this video, they're doing a collaboration with Easy EDA. As you know, it's my preferred PCB CAD program. It's simple but powerful. It's intuitive to use. Let's just have a quick look at a design I made recently. So here's a fairly recent design of mine, my ESP32 web radio. Designed it in Easy EDA because it had all the features that I needed. And uh, don't forget the teardrop feature that allows the tracks to be slightly bigger at the ends where they join pins and things to give them a bit more stability. And then you just click the Gerber button at the top here. So that one there. And it will say, great, let's do a DRC check, which you'd always do. But for the purposes of this uh, video, let's just skip that. And it says, great, you can either generate your Gerber files directly or order them at JLCPCB. And if you click that, it will go straight to the JLCPCB site, upload the Gerber files as it's generating them in the background automatically and uh, show you what you can do there. So let's have uh, another look at that. So this is JLC PCB's website. It's uh, two dollars for one to four layers PCBs. Pretty good value for five of those, and uh, you can go right up to 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. You've seen all this before in my other videos. The quality is great. So head over onto JLC PCB or Easy EDA site. The links are down below, and uh, see what you come up with tomorrow. Well worth a visit, believe me. And let's not forget they got a Facebook group. Here it is. And as you can see, they're joining forces here a bit more transparently so we understand that the two are connected. Easy EDA to design your PCB and JLC PCB to actually manufacture it. Sounds good to me. And if you join the group, there's all sorts of good things on the way. So have a look at that as well. JLC PCB, go and have a look. Right, the first thing to do if you want to find it is to head over to the Arduino um, forum or blog, I should say. Um, what I did is type in the Arduino IDE beta, as you can see here on the screen, and the very first entry is the one that uh, we need. There is also an awful lot of help regarding this IDE, because obviously Arduino wants it to be a success, and they realise that it can be a bit daunting for, well, both beginners and experienced people. So there's a lot of help as well. But anyway, if we just go to this one here so we can download it, and we'll see what happens next. 
Okay, this is the landing page and there's an awful lot of information on here, but buried amongst all this uh, good stuff that you really ought to read, there's a download it now, if I can uh, just whiz to that. Right, just down the bottom of the article and then try it now bit, you can see it says uh, download now, that one there. Um, now, unlike the, um, the alpha versions, which you may have tried out, the alpha version was just, I think they were zipped, but anyway, the point is you took the whole zip, put it into a folder and then ran it directly. This one is back to how most Windows programs, I don't know what it's like on Mac and Linux, but you, you can install it properly, right? So you install it and it does whatever it does behind the scenes. Um, and it then just puts uh, an icon on your desktop and you're away. Okay, um, now the point about this IDE that Arduino is making great pains to promote and make sure you understand what it's about is that beginners like their handheld and nothing too complicated. I can remember way back when I was starting off in microcontrollers or even you know the internet. I started off with the internet with AOL. Uh, America Online, I don't know if you can remember that, but it was simple and easy and didn't frighten me. And that's what beginners want. So what Arduino have done is made this um, almost as two versions. It's the same code, the same interface, but there's a beginner and an advanced version of it all built in together. And the beginner version will look very, very similar to the old Arduino IDE that we've come to hate and use for, for everything. Except, of course, you have all the goodies behind the scenes working for you to help you with things that we'll have a look at in a minute. When you've outgrown all that, though, and you think, yeah, I want a bit more now, I want to be in control, and you just click the Advanced tab and, well, you world's your oyster, so to speak, okay? So it's, it's, a, it's a pathway. You start off um, at the beginner level and then ramp up when you're ready to the advanced level. Okay, let's have a look at it in action and flash that LED. Okay, so I've fired it up. And it looks here, as you can see, pretty much like the old one always used to. Okay, uh, you do have to select the board as you would have done, although I think uh, the previous version was perhaps easier to select the board. Here you have a drop down list um, and you can select another board and a port. I've already selected the Arduino Uno, so if I select that one, you get all these boards and there's there are literally thousands of boards you can select these days because Arduino have recognised that everybody uses the Arduino IDE for every board there is, right? Except those of us using platform IO and other, other platforms like that, but that's, that's a different matter. So there are literally hundreds and thousands of boards on here, and I've selected the Arduino Uno because that's what I've got a clone of on my desktop. Okay. Um, now, I don't know why there's this little exclamation mark here about the fact I've selected COM4, because it does say down here, if you notice. Oh, I'm in the way. But right down in the bottom corner, let me just um, bring that up a bit so we can see it. There we are. It says down here, Arduino Uno on COM4. So why it's given me an exclamation mark there, I don't know. Maybe it's because I haven't actually uploaded any code to it yet. I've just literally plugged in the USB cable, and that's it. Now... Whilst I'm just going to quickly write four or five lines of code on here, which is the sketch that um, everybody uses first time, the Blink sketch, you could probably get this from the examples, actually. Now, the the great thing about any modern IDE, including this one now, is that you have auto-completion and auto-suggestion and things like that. What does that mean? Well, if we go on here and say the first thing we want to say is the LED on pin 13 is an output pin, right? So we can flash it. Okay, so we start typing... Uh, pin for example so p i squiggle squiggle look underneath straight away like mm, not quite sure what you mean yet uh, pin uh, now if you were to wait long enough it would probably pop up something but if you press control and space that's the give me some help please so i'll press control space and it says right everything i can find to do with pin is now listed and as you can see the very first thing it lists is a function pin mode and then it tells you what the parameters are expects so it goes which is the pin it's a u int 8 so it's an 8-bit integer type uh, for pin and an 8-bit integer type for the mode input output so you go ah yes that's what i needed to do it's called pin mode silly me for forgetting that so hit that and you go right what do you want your pin to be well, I'm going to break all my own rules and put in some magic numbers, even though I shouldn't do, and say, well, it's pin 13. Not a good thing to do that, but uh, there we are. And uh, then hit tab, and we go to the next one. And what do we want it to be? Well, we want it to be out. Now, it should also prompt us to say out 
put, shouldn't it? So uh, control, space, and the very first thing that pops up again is output. Brilliant. See, you can see now, even that one line is going to make a typing errors almost, well, unheard of. It won't let you type something in that's silly because you'll get a squiggle and you know it won't compile. And similarly, you can just type a few characters, get the thing you want by pressing control and space bar simultaneously, and then think that's the one. The blue line um, that you can see there is the one that's currently selected, and just hit enter and it auto completes. Now, is that not a huge step up from the effectively notepad type experience that we had on the old Arduino IDE? Yes, it is, I hear you cry, indeed. Okay, uh, semicolon. If we didn't put semicolons and things like that, it'll also tell you that things are wrong. Basically, it's gonna A, make your coding a lot quicker because you think, I, I know I need to use this function, I can't quite remember what it was called, and I certainly can't remember the order of the, the parameters that it takes. This will do all that for you. And, and even better is, of course, under the old system, the old Arduino IDE, you could write all your stuff and think, that's it, it's great, no mistakes there, <laughs> I wish. You hit compile and it comes up with a thousand errors because the you know, the third line in has got some kind of syntactical error there. And everything after that, it can't quite work out what you mean because that you never terminated the previous statement with a semicolon or something, yes? Um, and that's very frustrating because all these errors coming past, you think, stop, 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 I know what was wrong, I forgot something right up there. That won't happen anymore because you'll see that there's an error straight away because it's going to tell you. All right, right okay, let's uh, whiz through and type a few more things. So having done the pin mode, we want to, um, well, let's set it to low. Although when you switch on an on Arduino, the pins are set low anyway. I tend to sort of do it just in case, really. I think everybody does. So digit, 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 digit what? Digit... Oh, digital right. How did it know that? It's amazing, isn't it? Select that. Which pin? Well, once again, it's pin, no, not 12, 13, tab, and uh, we want low. Thank you very much. Tab again to the end and semicolon. Brilliant. I mean, this is this is going so well. And as you can see, it's all nicely color coded. So in the loop, all we need to do is have a, a simple on off type statement. So what we're going to do here is to say, Digital right, and we're going to have pin 13, tab, high, tab, semicolon. We'll have a little delay, even though nobody uses delays anymore. Let's say 500 seconds, tab, oh, wrong key. I'm trying to do this through the camera, so it's a little bit difficult. Semicolon, and uh, so digital right and we're going to have it on pin 13 and we're going to have it low and then we're going to have a another little delay let me just let me just finish this off all right okay that's that's the simple uh, blink sketch incidentally i tend to put a double blink sketch together when i'm testing new boards out and things just to make sure that um it's not something else that was pre-programmed as part of the bootloader upload. You know, when you got the board itself, most manufacturers, Far East, wherever, they tend to upload the bootloader uh, code and a sketch all at the same time that flashes the LED just to prove that it's all working, all well and good. Um, but then if you write your own, I want to test this board, if you put a double blink in it, so blink, blink, delay blink blink delay then you know that you've actually uploaded your code and you don't ever get into that situation where you think you've uploaded the code but in fact it's failed but because the led is blinking you think oh it's worked mm -hmm. been there done that okay right what do we do now then well for a start i haven't saved this yet because as you see at the top there it's saying sketch may 13a hmm obviously not saved so uh, let's save this and um then we can compile it and Oh, there's another noise in my workshop. And uh, move on. So what I've basically done here is just to click the verify button up there. Um, it's compiled the code and said, there it is. Now, if you notice, there's not a lot of information there because I obviously haven't set the compilation mode to verbose, which tells you an awful lot of what's going on as part of the compilation process. This is, once again, the sort of beginner mode where it's not trying to scare you by giving you lots of messages that you couldn't possibly understand as a beginner. But I do recommend 
that uh, you go to File Settings and change the compilation level to Verbose. The Help pages on the Arduino CC blog that we saw has all this in, in easy to understand language and uh, is well worth following. Anyway, we've compiled. Now we need to upload that to the Arduino on my workbench, which is still waiting here. There it is with my keyboard. So it's just waiting for something to happen and nothing is flashing. There's a red LED on there, and that's the power LED, and that's it. So let's go back to the code window. Right, all we're going to do here then is uh, click the upload. This will be interesting to see what happens. Right, is it going to find COM4? Oh dear. No upload port. Really? Oh. Right. Failed. Unknown. No upload port provided, which means it doesn't know which port we've selected here. Let's just uh, double check that, shall we? Select on the board and port. Go to here. We selected the UNO. We also selected COM4. Do you remember we did that bit? OK. But I'm going to have to shrink this window down a little bit. If you see here, it says Arduino Uno not connected down here. Down this bit here. Uh, don't know why. Let's go to Tools. There's a drop down window that says which port do you want? I say COM4 and it says nothing. OK, let's try let's try uploading it again, see if it's going to find it this time. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Let me I'm just going to go make sure I'm not doing something silly here and um, get back to you on this one. Well, all I've done is disconnect the Arduino from that USB cable, plug it back in again. And it goes, oh, you mean the Arduino? on COM4. Hmm. Oh well, <laughs> these things happen. It is beta software. Anyway, let's uh, upload and see if that's going to work now. Gosh, the uh, yeah, compilation. Oh, done uploading, it says. Right, let's uh, flip over to the main. Here it is. Is it flashing that LED? And as you can see, that top LED there is flashing away quite happily. So there we are. That's it's proof, really. <laughs> Not that you needed it particularly. That uh, the new Arduino IDE is good enough to compile and upload to your Arduino Uno, even if you do have to sometimes disconnect the USB connection and reconnect it. Although I suspect, in all honesty, it's probably because I've been playing about here a little bit, got itself confused. The look and feel, though, of this particular IDE looks very similar, does it not, to the the standard RDE, so all beginners can use this straight away, but get a massive boost in their understanding and productivity because of all those um, autocomplete and also suggestion and pop-ups like this one here. It tells you what the function is and the parameters it's expecting and what the what the general format of it is, the declaration of it is. All that is going to help tremendously. So I can only recommend to go away and download it. You can run it alongside the other Arduinos. IDEs that is okay although I would recommend always backing up your old code just in case and uh, start experimenting and clicking buttons really I mean these buttons over here for example we haven't even discussed great I'm going to leave it there because I want you to go away get the code download it um, install it on your PC whether that's Mac Linux or Windows which is what I'm using here Windows of course and just well yeah, flash an LED first just to get a feel of it and see all the things like when you type stuff in and when you put a decimal point in. You know. So if you say digital, if you said pin mode dot something, is it going to come up with lots of other different functions? Well, spoiler alert, yes, it does. OK, so it's well worth experimenting with it. And then you suddenly realize how useful a productivity aid it is. And uh, right, we'll leave this here. And we've still got that exclamation mark there. And I don't know why, because now we have uploaded and it has worked, so I suspect these are just little minor little things that will eventually be taken out in future beta releases. But it's working, it's stable, good stuff. Now, I was going to talk to you about the BBC stations and my ESP32 web radio, because um, that's I've got a solution for that. Um, but 
I've just been editing the video and already it's like coming up to 20 minutes and I've got a slow internet connection now because I live in the middle of a nowhere basically countryside fields and whatnot so I think we'll call a halt there as a first video after something like five months and uh, we'll see how you get on do download that IDE though and we'll talk about the ESP32 the BBC don't get me started and all that kind of stuff next video along with some other stuff and I'll also put together that uh, video on my workshop because I know a lot of you are interested in it, even if it's not directly related to Arduino. Well, it is, it is related to Arduino stuff, isn't it? I wouldn't have this workshop if I wasn't doing all this stuff. So, yeah, it is all very much related. OK, cool. We're going to leave it there. Put your comments down below if you've got anything to tell me. If you think this Arduino IDE 2.0 beta is uh, any good, if you've tried it or if you hit problems or not. You know, and I'm talking about cosmetic stuff with those exclamation marks or whatever. But if you've got any real issues, then do put them down there and we'll see if anybody else has had them and if, if indeed there's a new version coming out. Must be sort of a daily build going on somewhere, mustn't there? OK, great. OK, great to see you all again. And uh, do keep uh, uh, subscribed and tracked what I'm doing. And there'll be a new video on a fairly semi-regular basis, I hope. OK, nice to see you. See you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.